Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Nafis and Jose. Kifahalakum jami and ya ikwa wa akwa. Just want to share some of my past experience in terms of those things which they do not tell you about entrepreneurship or whenever you're embarking upon a business. So you guys right now, y'all see me standing in front of my third business venture by the permission of Allah Jalla wa Ala, as you can see in front of us. So let's walk inside. Um, this is my third business venture. And there's a lot of things that once you embark upon entrepreneurship, you're gonna see that there are a lot of things that you're not gonna find unless you experience it. Unless you take on that mantle or that role of wanting to start your own business. And the first thing about it is that when you start your own business, you're very excited. The idea starts and you think it's cool, that's a cool idea. So you ask your friends, you ask your family, and your friends and your family tell you, yes, that's a good idea at first. So you have people encouraging you. But what they don't tell you is that all of the amount of work that's gonna to have to go in in order to see the fruition of that idea take place. And that those same family and friends and loved ones and even co-workers that you have may not be there with you while you are going through the challenges and facing those challenges of actually starting a business. So the excitement is there, everyone, you're excited, so you tell everybody and you relay everything to everybody. But then you find that once you embark upon that particular business venture, those same individuals, very few of them, or very seldom of them, they're just gonna stand on the sidelines and watch. They're not gonna be your avid supporters, as you think. And why is I'm saying this? I'm saying this from first-hand experience. I remember by the permission of Allah, uh, I embarked upon the translation business at that time. Um, by the permission of Allah, Allah allowed me to understand some Arabic. So I was able to you know, try my hand by being encouraged by other brothers. Um, and we started on a project. And I never understood, you know, I was so excited doing my first book Alhamdulillah, and we was all translating, and I'm thinking everybody's gonna like this is something good for his face of Allah. And when we embarked upon it, I'm not gonna go into too details because that's not the point of this thing. So just wanted, I didn't know that a lot of individuals who were okay with me, but once I entered that realm or that world of translating, and the book got published and things like that, I seen different sides, and a lot of different people they started questioning uh, well, who is he he isn't qualified why is he doing that he's doing too much and it was a lot of people that was like okay why are you even in this field and it was funny because i never expect to face that opposition so i just want to remind you people that whenever you embark upon a business remember some steps first thing you want to remember is that allah he tells muhammad sallallahu alaihi in a famous surah that most of us if not majority of us memorize and that surah is called Surah Al-Duha. At the end of that tremendous surah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentions that, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةَ رَبِّكَ فَهَدِّثْ Right? And this particular surah, brothers and sisters, right? In this surah, He mentioned that, فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ Right? He said, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةَ رَبِّكَ فَهَدِّثْ He tell Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Allah has conferred the favor upon you, then proclaim it to the people. So the scholars, they mentioned in Tafsir that one of the benefits of that is that a person waits until he have that particular thing before he broadcasts it. Sort of like they say, for example, an individual doesn't go out, he doesn't put the carriage before the horse, so to speak. He doesn't put the carriage for the horse. He wait until he have all of his eggs in the basket, so to speak. And that's how he's able to move on. So Allah tells Muhammad Sallallahu after the nitmah has been conferred upon you, then you relay the news. Then you proclaim the news to others. But you have to also be warned. When you have a nitmah, you have to understand that there is a standard rule that whenever you have a nitmah, and trust me, being an entrepreneur and having that drive, having that spark, having that uh, will to be able to pour, I mean, the endurance to strive for, and to be able to move on even if you don't have all the necessary tools. Because being successful does not mean monetary gain. And even if you don't have all of the right qualifications people think that you need to have to become successful in business, you need to have the right ingredients. 
and you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of oppositions even from those who are most close to you we see that in the seerah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after nofal who was the actual cousin of his his, his wife khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha where she mentioned that when he relates to him the story that he had the same message he says he had the same message that musa came with right and when he mentioned that he said you're only your people they're going to expel you out they're going to they're going to turn you away they're going to reject you even though he had this profound message even though he lived amongst them as the trustworthy the Allah mean even though they knew him for his upright character all of these things didn't mean nothing once and foremost that he had all of these forward characters he doesn't have that so what happens is as you see that's what happened people reject you so Allah Jalla wa Allah, he says about the ni'mah at this conferred conferred the plan you look in the story of Yusuf Yusuf salam, had a dream which to prophets dreams are realities so he had this dream and he related to his father Yaqub salam. and his father said ya bunayya la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatika fayakidu laka kayda he told him he said do not relay this message to your brothers for they will plot against you these was his blood brothers by the way do not relay this message of this dream do not tell of your dream to your brothers. Then he said, Inna shaitana lil insani aduwa mubina. Aduwa mubina. He said, Indeed, shaitan is ever an open enemy to man. And if you know the story of Yusuf, this is not the point of that. You will see all of the plots and trials that he had went through. But just because of that beautiful dream and what it contains in it, and the fit, the, the, the nitma that Allah conferred upon this great prophet, he was going to face trials and tribulations. So for an entrepreneur, you have to understand you are telling other individuals who don't share the vision, who don't, who are not dreamers, who are more practical in terms of let's go to work, let's have a safety net. You are telling these individuals you're willing to stand out on a limb. You're willing to sacrifice that which you have to become successful. So to a lot of people that is challenging, that is threatening to other individuals, so they're going to feel an opposition. So what they would do is, most of them not going to come to you and tell you that you're not going to be successful. You're going to have some people going to say, well, that's, that's, that it would never work. You're not qualified. But most people aren't going to come to you and tell you that, you aren't, that you're not going to be successful. They're going to stand in the sidelines and watch. And my dear friend can tell you, when we embarked upon the book public, publishing company, and we started in that company, in that business venture, you'd be surprised how many brothers and sisters that we think that will open their arms to us, opening, open, they welcome us with open arms, haven't. And I give you an incident. We went, into, we give, I give you an incident one time. We went into a particular uh, dollar center. I'm not gonna, you know, go into names because that's not the purpose here. I'm not trying to blast anyone. But we went into a particular dollar center. Alhamdulillah, that you know, broadcasting and here to which would be the correct way. And this is an interesting story because we went in there and we was trying to, you know, sell this individual some of the translations that we had and some of the books that we had. So, you know, he put us through a lot of questioning. He said, okay, brother, uh, who's this? Who's that? Who was this? Is this scholar this or that scholar that? And we went through all of this process to him ending up saying, no, we're not even going to get it because he was Larry from the... He knew us, meaning he knew me, right? And he knew that I, you know, circulate that mass shit. He knew of me and things like that, but he still was kind of leery. So he ended up not buying them. And so we left out. But before we left out, I, I just left the books with him. You know, I, 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 I left the books with him. I said, hun, you can just have some books here. You can have these books. They're yours by the permission of Allah. Jalla wa ala. And we didn't get halfway down the block before he chased us down and told us to come back and he purchased some more books from us. But then, the story goes on. We went to New Jersey, to another community, and another group of brothers at another store that who you might say outwardly doesn't adhere to the, to the Dawah to Salafi, as, as you might say. And we went in there and he never met us at all. And we showed him a project that we had. This individual said, give me two cases of what you have. And he purchased the two cases without any inquisition, without any opposition, without any of the things. Because what your friends and family is going to look at you is like, you shouldn't be doing that. 
you aren't qualified to do it. You don't have what it takes to make it. And in reality, they feel that way because they know that you do have those things and they see those things. So what they're not going to tell you, being an entrepreneur is not all honky dory. You're not going to just walk up, wake up one day and everything's going to be all right. You're going to be behind on bills. You understand this? You're going to be behind on bills. You're going to be chasing your dream. You're going to be sacrificing. And it might take longer than what you expect. It's going to be friends and families that you're going to lose along the way and supporting you. And then you're going to find people outside of your immediate area supporting you. The same thing you can see with the seer of the Prophet Wasallam. What happened? The people from uh, Yathrib, which was known then before the Prophet Wasallam went to Medina, they, the Ansars, were those who supported him outside of Mecca. They were those who supported them, supported him outside of Mecca. So this is why everyone asks, how come you find someone in your own town not supporting you, but you find someone who's not from your hometown more supportive of your ideas and your business venture? You have to look back at that Sarah. This is how normally it goes. And then people, what they would do is they'll wait to see if you're going to fall flat on your face. And if you don't fall flat on your face, then they come out of the shadows and say, and they brag about you to other individuals. Yeah, that's my man. We cool with this. You're going to go through that. I want to let you brothers know that, or your sisters know, you're going to go through that when you embark upon entrepreneurship. Another thing you need to know when you're embarking upon entrepreneurship that they're not telling you. There are some secrets that you can have that you can use secret ingredients that will help you uh, endure those trials and tribulations and those tests. And one of those things is mentioned also in Surah Al-Duha. If you pay attention to Surah Al-Duha, Allah Jalla wa Allah is comforting His Prophet. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in that Surah is comforting His Prophet. He's consoling him, and He tells His Prophet at the end, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He mentioned to him before confirming the nitm upon him. He told him to be this way towards those who are less fortunate. Behave this way towards those who are orphans. Because not before you were that way and Allah conferred his favor upon you. Not before you were this way and Allah conferred his favor upon you. So by acknowledging the favor that Allah gave you, increase in being kind and benevolent to others. And the way at the top of the list of being kind and benevolent to others is giving charity. So if you have a business and you have any type of business venture you want to embark upon, make sure charity is a part of it. As the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said in authenticated hadith, mix the sadaqah with the bear, with the cell. Mix the charity with the cell. One of the things that will keep you long lasting and longevity in business and the secret ingredient to endure those trials and tests because everyone you expect to be there for you aren't going to be there for you. But Allah will. As long as you be kind and benevolent to those, give charity. So that's one. Another thing you can do as a secret ingredient to keep you enduring while you're being tested or tried, not only just giving charity, increase that risk, is another thing you can do. And that is you can place your total reliance upon Allah as a wajal. You can place your total reliance upon Allah as a wajal. And you shouldn't hold no grudges towards the individuals who did not support you. What's my proof of that? You have to look at the story of Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam. Notice how his father, as well as himself, when it was informed that these was his brothers that was plotting against him, that was actually intending to try to murder him at first, and actually threw him down the well and left him for dead, where he got sold into slavery, etc., 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 he still made dua and he still forgave them. So this is the counteract that you have to do. You have to realize that you forgive your opponents, you forgive your family, your friends, your loved ones, your co-ones who are not advocate supporters of you, even if they be your spouse, your significant other, you forgive them. Because like we said, you are willing to chase your dream and stand on the line. And when you're willing to do that, you are showing some type of courage, you are showing some type of bravery, you are showing some type of merit. That that other person might feel inferior because you are willing to chase your dreams. So you're going to meet with opposition. And they don't tell you about that. Also, they don't tell you the simple fact that when you're running a business, it's not going to always be profit. Okay?
Okay? Sometimes you're going to break even. You're going to break even sometimes. And that's okay. Majority of the time, you're going to break even for the first two to five years. And depending on what business venture that you, you are starting on. Because you might not have enough capital to come in. And if you had enough capital to come in, then you got to make sure that you can maintain that capital. And this is something that people need to understand. Sheikh Saleh Fozani speaks about this and the different types of partnership in the book called Malakwa Salfiq. The jurisprudence of Fiqh, he goes over this in detail. So we tell the people to actually arm yourself with knowledge. Benefit yourself with knowledge in terms of whatever business venture you in. Become knowledgeable in that thing. I'm going to give you guys something, an insight and encouragement for you. I'm standing in my third business venture. My third business venture, brothers and sisters, is a restaurant. I am not a cook. I don't even have passion to cook. To be honest with you, I don't like cooking myself. I love food. Yes, we all love to eat food. Alhamdulillah. But I am standing in my third business, which is a restaurant, by the permission of Allah Jalla wa Ala. No, I didn't know that I would be at a restaurant before in my life as a business venture. But I, by the permission of Allah, had the drive, and I'm willing to succeed in whatever business venture I'm willing to go into. So I have to arm myself with the knowledge that comes along with running a restaurant. You understand? So all of these things, all of these things must be understood. And what I'm telling you guys is that when you embark upon being an entrepreneur, you have to follow your gut, your heart. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the people telling you it's not going to work. Don't listen to the people telling you that there are many other people out there. They don't need your project. They don't need your energy. They don't need this. That don't mean that. Because you still, yourself, by the permission of Allah, you still have something to contribute. And just because a million people are doing it, you can just look at the different stores. There are many different stores, chains of stores that sell the same exact thing. You got Home Depot, you got Lowe's, you got Walmart, right? You got Kmart, you got a lot of different stores. That's not stopping them from embarking upon chasing their dreams. That's not stopping a person to come up with five and below because you have different other stores like dollar stores or dollar generals that don't stop them from coming. But being an entrepreneur is going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to go to sleep. Sometimes you're going to go to sleep hungry. And that's going to be most times and often when you're starting up. And also when it comes to human beings, a lot of them, as the Prophet ﷺ said, he said you're going to find out of one camel, a hundred camel, you're going to find one suitable to ride. When he was talking about the comparison between human beings that are reliable, what they do sometimes often is they don't want to start up nothing with you. They want to come to after you are successful. After you get to the point where you're at and you think you, you know, they think you made it, then they want to come in. They don't want to do it with you from the beginning because it's hard work. But if you don't have that burning desire, you don't have that drive that will push you forth to go forth, then you, it's going to crumble. And it's going to fall down, it's going to collapse, and then you're going to prove your naysayers correct. And that's all you have to have. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have a lot of capital. You don't have to have a lot of, for example, you don't have to have a lot of fancy things. This, all you have to have is that burning will. You don't even have to have a lot of knowledge in that specific field. You understand? All you have to have is that burning drive to do it. And then you educate yourself as you go along the way about that particular thing. So this is what I want to share with you guys about the things they don't tell you about entrepreneurship. Okay? You can do it. No one can, didn't tell you before, I'm letting you know that you can do it. Any business venture that you're doing right now, continue to sell yourself and market yourself, but don't worry about getting the support from people you expect to get support from. That's not your customer base, okay? You have to understand your customer base is not going to come from those who are just close to you. And that's what many people say. I hear the stories all the time. If I start a business, my family's going to support me. If I start a business, my friend's going to support me. I know a lot of people. No, you're wrong. Because those people aren't going to come. It's at 2927 Kensington Avenue. It's in what we call the nickname Gotham. But it's at 2927 Kensington Avenue. Those people aren't going to be there to support you. They told the Prophet, he couldn't, when Nofa told him, he said, what? My people are going to drive me out? He said, yes. They're going to drive you out for the information that you contain, for that what you have. So yes, they're going to drive you out. They're not going to accept you. So don't expect them. Don't expect them to be your supporters. But you have to rely on the fact 
of your drive and rely on Allah Azza wa Jal and know that support going to come. There was an old saying that they have in Rome. They said, build it and then what? They will come. So after you build it, you have to build that necessary thing. After you build whatever you're trying to accomplish and after you make your dream come to fruition, then your supporters is going to come out. And that support's going to come from places that you didn't imagine. So I just wanted to share this as a morning inspiration to you all. Uh, hopefully, uh, you got benefit from it just as well as I got benefited from. But I learned a lot, brothers and sisters, coming from uh, just selling oils to having a retail store, from translating books in a publishing company to a restaurant. So, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's by the permission of Allah, and, and, and it's amazing. But at the same time, I witnessed a lot of heartfelt, a lot of, you know, separation, a lot of different things. And I wish that I had all of this information before embarking upon what I embarked upon before I can know how to maneuver and ex what to expect. Because sometimes you don't know that. Sometimes you don't know that. But do not give up your drive. Jazakallah khayyam. Whatever we said that was incorrect is definitely from ourselves. And shaitan was expressed from Allah. Subhanakallahum bihamdi. Ashadu ala la anta staku wa tubi ilayh. And don't forget, brothers and sisters, we do serve halal meat down here at TK Homestyle Cooking. It's 2927 Kinsington Avenue. The phone number is 267-606-6631. Jazakallah khayyam.